I'm Jess Griffo. This is Julie Fernandez. Uh, Hello. So let me start out with like my version of your introduction and then I'll let you talk about what you do. So um, I think we met through Instagram. Is that correct? Yeah. I, I reached out to you because I loved what you were doing and I wanted to like dance. <laughs> yeah. So you made it so accessible. That's why I loved it. Oh, thank you. Well, I loved um, your story. And when we first connected, it was, so Julie was actually the, the very first student that I had in the Dance Rebel leadership training. So at the beginning of 2019, when I was, I was just like testing out the idea and I had done a post around like, hey, if I were to teach, if I were to do a dance teacher training that was about honing in on your own unique dance voice and formulating it into an offering or being able to integrate dance as an offering into what you're already doing, is that something you'd be interested in? And Julie was like, yes, and we had a conversation and there you go, she was uh, the first pioneer member, which I am so ever grateful for. And in addition to being a somatic trauma therapist, Julie also teaches yoga. She's a teacher trainer herself. Um, and I'm going to say that you're a dancer, even though I know sometimes you have a hard time admitting that you are a dancer. Um, yeah. So yeah, tell us a little bit more about, about what you do. And if you want to throw in a little of like your dance story, I would love that too. Sure. I mean, I love, so I love um, calling myself a dance rebel because the way I see it is like, I dance even though I'm not supposed to, like I have no training. Right. And so like, I've never trained in dance. I've always wanted to as a little girl, like I've asked my parents and it was always denied. And so it was always just like my dream. And then I kind of kept it secret for a long time, but it just kept like eating me up inside. And so I took this as an opportunity to just like dance and like, who cares if you know what you're doing or not, just dance. And then I learned that I can actually do more than I thought I could. So um, it was really cool. So that's my, my journey with dance and why I was so interested in your program, because as a non dancer, how can I incorporate this movement that everyone can do um, and make it accessible to people. So you're learning from someone who's not trained in dance. You're not intimidated by that. Um, cause I know I was, I didn't want to go take a class cause I was like, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm going to be the only one that doesn't know. Um, so that was what got me, um, really excited about your program and it's been so wonderful and so helpful and just like allowing me to be myself. Um, and not worry about like what training I have or don't have. So it's, it was great. Wonderful. Okay. Um, yeah. And then, so what I do um, besides that is I am a somatic trauma therapist and um, I work with um, people uh, individually, uh, usually one-on-one -on -one, um, to help them recover from their traumas and could be anything. I think though that most of my clients um, have struggled with a lot of like childhood abuse um, and like sexual trauma and domestic violence. Um, and I, I also work with a nonprofit called Exhale to Inhale, uh, where I'm a, 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 their trainer for their um, trauma-informed yoga teacher training program. And uh, so I also teach trauma-informed yoga and we work with survivors of domestic violence and sexual violence. So um, trauma is kind of like my world. Um, and it comes from like my own experience with trauma, just like for me being able to heal my own traumas, I really um, help, I, I, I'm so passionate about helping other people find their innate capacity to heal and to tap into their strength. Um, and it's all body-based. So dance is a really big part of that. Mm, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And without without going into too much detail around like your personal trauma as to not re-traumatize you or anyone watching if there's any sensitive topics, mm -hmm. but more in the sense of like, can you share more about when, because I, I feel like so many people go through trauma, right, at some point when they're young and don't have a word for it or really don't like realize that they've mm -hmm. had it until much later. Was there a, like, when was the point where you actually named it or knew that that was? Oh yeah. I mean, that's a really good question. I, so was actually, um, when I was doing my yoga teacher training, um, I was doing my yoga teacher training and then I realized like there's a science behind why I've, I felt better. Cause 
when I first did yoga, that's what actually helped me to like, it, it started me on my healing journey. Um, and I didn't even know why I just knew I started, I was feeling better. And like, I felt more connected. And I was like, Oh, this is really interesting. I want to continue to explore that. So I continue to explore it. And then there's like a science behind it. I'm like, that is so cool. So I decided that that's what I wanted to do for people. So I wanted to go work with youth and specifically like at risk teenage girls so that they didn't have to suffer the way that I did. And when I started working with them, I saw more like, it, it was just like, there was so much, I mean, I didn't have the word for it then, but there was so much trauma. I just, I saw so much pain and so much hurt. And so I started to um, like study on my own, just like figure out how can I better help them. And then this word trauma kept coming up. I was like, what is trauma? And then I was like, oh shit, I have trauma. Oh shit, they have trauma. You know, so I think that's what it was. It was and it wasn't that long ago. I think it was like 2012. Mm -hmm. um, and but I mean, but I had been working with my own trauma and working with others who have trauma before that, I just didn't know how to name it. I just knew we were all in pain and we were suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, it's, I feel like it's not something like we don't really learn about that when we're younger, right? Like there's no word for it. That <laughs> is a part of mm -hmm. education. Um, that's really powerful. And how would you, like, how would you define trauma? from the perspective you have now? Yeah, so trauma really, I mean, there's so many ways to define it, but it's an experience of something that happened too soon, it was too much, it was too fast. So um, because it, it happened so soon and it was so much, like we, would, we weren't able to um, integrate that experience. And, and so then our, our capacity to cope was then overwhelmed. Mm. And it was just like overridden by the need to survive in that moment. Mm -hmm. So um, it really is just about like not being able to integrate that experience and to fully complete it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it can, it's so complex. So that's why it's like, it's, it's hard to talk about in just like a short amount of time. But yeah, um, but yeah it's important when we understand it. And we, when we understand like, the role that our bodies play in that trauma and, and our brain. And that's why I'm excited to be able to, to share that information with your, you know, your students, your people. Uh, exactly. And, mm -hmm. and that's why, you know, one of the reasons why I invited you to, to do this is because, I mean, th there was a long time where like, I didn't really have a name for it either. And I think when we're when we're facilitating movement or really anything right where it involves the human body um for like for many years i think i you know like maybe i was kind of aware but not really but like the more work that i did and, and i did a trauma-informed mindfulness training through connection coalition um last year and that was really impactful for me because I was like, oh, like there, there are just certain things that like, I, I guess I wasn't thinking about before when I was facilitating and being more aware of the ways in which trauma affects the body and therefore can affect our ability to be in a room with other people, with other bodies to, you know, the, the ways in which we interact with each other, so much of that is affected and so um, so I know, so next week you're going to be guest teaching a more official class, which by the way, if anyone watching is interested in, um, I'll share more at the end. Julie is guest teaching for the Dance Rebel Leadership Training. We're doing a special segment on trauma awareness. And, um, and that's also going to be open if you want to drop into just that class, if you are a movement professional yourself and want to start the process. Because again, it's, it's a longer process. One class isn't going to, you know, make you completely trauma informed, but it is going to, um, I think, start with that aware, right? It's, you're calling it awareness. So it's like, mm -hmm. so tell us more about that. Like, what, what does that mean to you? Like the awareness of it being trauma informed, how does that change the way that someone would then be able to facilitate a class with that awareness? Yeah, so it's understanding that um, the, the trauma is very prevalent in our culture right now, understanding how trauma affects us 
well, us personally, I think it starts with us, um, how we're affected by it, um, how my body is affected by it. So I can understand like my internal experience um, and like the complexity of the human experience, which then allows me to understand your human experience. So there's, um, there's a lot of compassion and empathy that comes from that. Um, but why it's so important to understand like our behaviors um, because it's all affected by the lens through which we see the world. And when someone has experienced trauma, we see the, the world through that trauma lens, right? The world is unsafe and scary and all of that. And it really does affect our behaviors. And so when we're a trauma aware, um, we can then understand like the, like the behaviors, like the front facing, whatever it is that we see in the person, not take it personally. And actually what's most, most important is that when we're trauma aware, we can then create the environment, a safe environment to support someone's healing through trauma. So it's not, not about like us healing each other or even like, ourselves like it's not that pressure to like heal ourselves but to understand what is helpful and what is harmful and do less of the harmful stuff um and we continue to do more of the stuff that helps us all heal and feel better and feel connected to one another so it really is just about that like we we then change the way we kind of walk around the world and interact with people and and then there's just more understanding which is just, yeah. it just changes everything. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And that perspective of like, it's not about, it's not about you, someone, right. Whoever is like teaching, being the one to save someone or to right to heal someone. It's the way you worded it was so beautiful. I know I'm forgetting, but like holding the space for them to like be in their own healing process. Is that right? Yeah. Doing, yeah. Noticing, okay, um, like, yeah, what, what's the helpful behavior? What's the harmful behavior? Because we could be doing things that are harmful without even realizing it. Without knowing, yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, I don't think that, I mean, there are a lot of people that they're, it, they're not intentionally causing harm, but it's like the difference between using like um, an empowering word versus like a, not like a triggering word, but like just a word that's not as empowering. Like, for example, like a, a really a good example is like, I don't like to use the word victim. I'd rather use the word survivor. There's a, it has a more like empowering, uplifting tone um, than victim. And so it's just like making these like simple switches um, so that you can create this like space and this like sense of safety for people to um, explore their own, um, inner world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. And are there any like small practices that you have done yourself? I mean, I guess we can take it from the facilitator standpoint, um, just like a little sneak peek or I don't know, something that, that you practice yourself that helps you show up better for other people. Oh, as a facilitator? Facilitator. Yeah, you know, I, and that's something too that I talk about a lot. Like as the facilitator, as the teacher, as the leader in the room, you are the regulating, anchoring nervous system. So your nervous system has to be regulated before you go on to work with anyone else. And so um, it's different for everybody. It really is just about finding what's going to work for you. Um, for me personally, I, um, I check in with my breath and make sure that it's uh, deep and, and like uh, it feels like easy. Um, and then I check in with my body. And if there's any like tension or tightness, um, then I move that out. And so this is where like dance and movement come in. Um, so before I get ready to work with people, I have to like dance it out and, and check in with my nervous system and make sure that it feels, um, steady and calm and just like ready. And that doesn't mean I don't get nervous, but it doesn't, um, I don't lead from that place, right? I focus on like where I'm feeling strong and, um, and also like comfortable and steady and at ease because we can have both. 
that's fine. I get nervous all the time. I mean, I'm nervous now, so. <laughs> you are, you don't get nervous. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I love that. Yeah, and dance, for me, dance in particular, when it comes to anxiety or nervousness or just being a little bit dysregulated, there's something about physical movement in particular through dance that has been really helpful. And I think like, like even before, um, before teaching or before performing, there's been a few times when I was like about to go on stage and I went to like the public restroom when we could go to public restrooms at the time. Not anymore. Um, <laughs> where we could, mm-hmm. um, I, and I just like put music on in my, earbuds and I just like I just in like the little bathroom so I was just like ah, I just like danced it out and released stuff and it's like okay I, and and that's like from this perspective right it's like oh you're calming the nervous system you're releasing energy right there's like an actual physiological process that's that's transforming when you're doing that totally yeah and that's what it's about like you know, somatics is all about the understanding that um, everything is like one interconnected system, our mind, our body, our emotions. And we know this to be true because, I mean, when we're sad, we cry, right? When we feel anxious, we probably feel like our heartbeat going faster and our breath changes and we maybe get like butterflies in our tummy or whatever it is. Like we feel it all physically. Um, We're just also not conditioned. We've been conditioned to not think about it or not pay attention to those things. Um, Because I I find that most common, like when I talk to people about it, they're like, oh my gosh, that's so true. Like, oh, you're right. Mm -hmm. You know, then, and I know like something super simple, like growing up, I didn't pay attention to like my hunger signals when my stomach growled, I didn't pay attention. I didn't know like that was, oh, I have to eat now. So I just didn't eat, (laughs) you know, but um, it's those kinds of things that we need to pay attention to. Like our body's always speaking to us and letting us know what it needs. So when we're anxious, our body's letting us know there's energy here. We need to move it. So move it. Exactly. <laughs> and you're touching on a really important point in that we've been conditioned to not listen to our body, to not understand the language of our bodies. It's like we never, and I, when I say we, I'm making a big generalization because I don't know how everyone who's watching this, you know, grew up, but in, I would, I would say for the most part, at least in the United States, I think um, there's a lot of us who grow up in a society where it's like, it's very much about suppressing what our body is saying, right? Because like, you don't want to, like emoting can be a dangerous thing or like an embarrassing thing or something that mm-hmm. in front of you for, or something you get in trouble with once totally. parents for crying and then you never want to cry again or like that becomes a dangerous thing. And like, we just, we somehow learn to, uh, and even like you said, hunger, hunger pains, like things like that, that it's just like, I don't, whatever, I don't know what that is. I'm supposed mm-hmm. to thing. let me, let my head lead the way. And totally. over time that becomes problematic because then there's all this unexpressed energy and emotions and history and trauma that then continues mm-hmm. in the body because it never had an outlet to be released. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love that you said that because it's exactly true. Like we have been taught to suppress and like just cut ourselves off from our emotions um, and especially our body, right? Like, you know, when we're sad and like as a kid and we cry and they say like, don't cry, be tough, like keep going or whatever it is. um, We, we then are conditioned to um, function from like our higher thinking brain and cuts us off completely from our emotional part of our brain. And then our body, um, the, the part of our brain that controls our body and so now we're only functioning from that one part but for us to thrive in life we have to stay connected to all three major parts of the brain that connect the body the heart and our mind Mm -hmm. and so that's what um like healing trauma is about it's it's um integrating these three parts of our brain once again and somatic practices um like dance and yoga are wonderful tools to do that so it's really powerful. Great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I just want to yeah. anybody is watching and has questions, feel free to type them in. I think we can take um, a couple of questions. Um, and I'm looking at my notes. I'm like, I had all these questions I was going to ask you, but I feel like we've already kind of covered them. And what? <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything, anything else that comes to mind for you before we close up around? Um, around this topic or around maybe a preview of what you're going to be teaching next week in the more formal class? Yeah, I mean, so I think first we'll need to understand like a basic, we'll need to have a basic understanding of what is trauma and how it affects us and also how it can show up, especially as like facilitators, what would we see in the room with our clients? Um, and you know, now we have to talk about like virtually, how do we deal with that? Um, but we'll talk about like some of the ways that um, it can show up and then what can you do as a facilitator to help someone through that, um, to help them kind of get out of a dysregulated state if that's what's happening. Um, but then also I want to explore um, different like tools and techniques that we can um, like use for ourselves, but also maybe incorporate into some of the classes that will help support someone's healing. So help support the regulation of someone's nervous system and also to release some of that excess um, traumatic energy that may be stuck inside. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll be working with the nervous system a lot. We'll talk about that um, and do some like experiential stuff. So I think it'll be fun. <laughs> uh and yeah. that's kind of the key like I like to have fun in everything that I do and that's so important because if we think about it like when there's an actual threat or danger you cannot have fun it's impossible because you need to focus on surviving and so now if you can focus on having fun and being playful and enjoying yourself you're automatically like telling your nervous system and your brain that it's safe mm. and um and you start to release some of that like uh like the bracing and, and some of the armor that we put on um, to protect ourselves from this threat, whether it's real and or imaginary, and it's probably imaginary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that because that it, it makes sense as to why I feel like I lean on humor a lot when I'm teaching, you know, in my TikTok videos, <laughs> whatever it is, and especially lately, it's like mm -hmm. all I want to do is like comedy. And I feel like what you're saying lands very true for me because it's like, oh yeah, when we're having fun, when we're laughing, when we're enjoying, that that's also healing for mm -hmm. the trauma. It takes us out of that response and right, yeah, else to open up and some sort of healing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it really does. It sends all the right signals to the nervous system that says we're safe because we wouldn't be playing otherwise. If there was a bear or a tiger right outside, like you wouldn't be playing, you'd be running, you know, or something. I don't know what we would do if there was a bear or a tiger, but you definitely wouldn't play. Yeah, yeah. And so now if you can prioritize play, you're sending the right signal of like, we're safe. We're safe enough in this moment. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so yeah. that you were going to be teaching, that I'm going to be co-hosting with you is very much yeah expect to have fun and to you know like we're, we're gonna make it a fun process even though we're gonna be talking about pretty pretty deep stuff uh but that's why i'm really i just love your energy and i'm so excited to have you on as a guest facilitator because of who you are in that sense of bringing that play and lightness and energy um and at the same time going really deep in the healing process yeah i'm excited yay so well i'll just say a few more words to close up unless you have anything else that we didn't cover that you feel like you want to share i don't think so I, I don't think so i feel like if you're interested in learning more come and join and let's have fun <laughs> yeah that's what i was gonna say too exactly <laughs> uh, Bio, I think it's under drop in classes, but I'm gonna I'll put like a more obvious one out there soon. Um, it's next Wednesday, 5 p.m. Eastern. It will be recorded if you can't make it live. Um, there'll be a sign up page, all the details will be on there. And again, this is um, 
This is a drop-in uh, trauma awareness class specifically for people who are dance or other types of movement facilitators, but really anyone who's working with people and bodies. Um, if you want to be trauma informed and know how to be helpful and not harmful in supporting, you know, the healing that's going on in your students. Um, it is part of the Dance Rebel Leadership Training, which uh, is also available as something you can do as a whole if you're someone who's been wanting to bring dance into your teaching practice, uh, uh, wanting to bring your unique background with dance and turn it into a class or an offering. So it's kind of like the teacher training for dance rebels, for people who don't like to follow the rules. Like maybe, maybe you have a Zumba training or you have a Nia thing or you have this or yoga and like you've done a few things, but, and they're great, but you're like ready to make something your own and you're ready to really hone in on your unique leadership style and how you can bring that to share with others and to um so not only the creative side of bringing that offering out but also the business side of how do you actually go about launching a class or a workshop or whatever it is that you desire so we go into all of that in the entire training there's also a link in my bio about that if you're curious so with that, I think that's all the announcements we have. Hope to see you next Wednesday. And Julie, thank you yeah. so much. I'm really excited thank to dive you. deeper with you next week. Same, same. So excited. Thank you for having me. Sure. Thank you so much. All right. Well, have a great rest of your Tuesday. I hear the, do you hear that? Thank There's you. like kids. In I do. Kids playing. They're playing. It's great. They're we playing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and the play in the back it's great. <laughs> yeah. Love it. Thank you awesome. so much. And I'll see you soon. Okay, great. Sending Bye. love.